How many, um, how many people were drugged here by their mothers today? Don't, don't raise your hand. I'm just kidding. Please don't. <laughs> don't. You're going to get in trouble. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm not, I'm not unaware of the fact that Mother's Day can be very challenging for, for a lot of people uh, for various reasons. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people that are celebrating today. Um, there's a lot of people that are mourning today. There's a lot of people that are grieving today, and I get that. There's a, it's a, this is a day of, of a lot of mixed emotions, and it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to hear the phrase, Happy Mother's Day. Sometimes you, you might avoid, maybe in the past you might have avoided going to church or avoided going out on Mother's Day just to avoid someone telling you Happy Mother's Day. And, and uh, you know, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of different seasons that we're going in uh, to today and, and lots of different uh, lots of different lifestyle, li- lots of different seasons of life that we're going through, and and lots of different reasons why we might be excited and celebrating, and we might be mourning and grieving, and I'm not unaware of the fact that that is a that is a hard thing to do. But um, you know, I, I think no matter where we're sitting with that today, that we can um, that we can acknowledge and we can take the time to maybe think about some of the mother figures in our life, and and know that this day is is to celebrate them too, and. I, I don't mean to sound insensitive when I when I say this, but you know, as as hard as it may be for you, that there is a, there's a mom out there that that would love to hear Happy Mother's Day from you, um, just knowing what you're going through and knowing how tough it is. Uh, I'm sure that that would just make their day. So, I, like I said, I'm not unaware of the fact, but there, there's a lot of there are a lot of mother figures out there uh, that that aren't even biological mother figures, stepmoms, foster moms, adoptive moms, godmothers, aunts, cousins. If you know. Just taking care of, of, a, of a child, taking care of somebody, and, and being that mother figure. We celebrate you today, too, uh, regardless if you have children of your own. I, I think this is a day that we can really, uh, really widen the, um, the range of, of, of who we celebrate because you guys matter, too. So, so I just wanted to, to put that out there. I, I believe that, that a lot of these women deserve to be celebrated today for the, for the work you put in and for the, uh, for the effort you, you make and for the... Um, for the, for the for the investment you make in, in someone's life, um, regardless if you have biological kids of your own. So just want to put that out there. I, I think it's, it's, it's a great day um, to celebrate all of, those, all of those mother figures. Because mom, just, it, mom isn't just a title. It's a character trait. And I, again, I hope I don't sound insensitive when I say this. Mom isn't just some, some default uh, title that we give someone that, that uh, is able to, to birth children or has birthed children. But, but mom, is, it goes so much deeper than that, it's so much deeper than just on the surface. Mom, mom the title of mom, mother, is, 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 is something that is a character trait, something that they, they show, they prove through the way that they raise, or through the way that they influence, through the way that they um, make an impact on someone's life. I, I think that that is what is deserving of the title of mom. So, so if that is you today, we celebrate you this morning. And, and again, I understand that there's a lot of different seasons of life that we're going through, but but understand um, that, that a lot of you make a difference in, 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 in people's lives and in ch- children's lives. And you may not consider yourself a mom, but I, again, I think that title is, is a character trait more than it is just a, just a default. Just a default. So um, I, the, the last week we talked about, um, we, we were in the, in the book of James. If, if anybody was here last week, uh, that, was a, that was a tough pill to swallow. Um, I remember just being up here feeling the, 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 uh, the tense room. Um, <laughs> so thank you for, for pushing through with that. And it was a hard message to hear. It's a hard message to preach, really. Um, so so I'm, I'm glad that you were able to, to make it out last week, if you were. But I, I've been, we normally do a bunch of sermon series uh, where we kind of have a bunch of, a bunch of different messages that are related in, in some way, shape, or form. And, and I felt like God tell me uh, a couple weeks ago, like, hey, just take a break from the series for like a week or two. I just want to. I just want to preach some some messages, uh, and, and so God has laid some messages on my heart. Um, it just not really connected, not really in a in in a series per se, but but really just some some standalone messages, and that that's what I'm gonna really uh, preach today to you. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be in the book of Titus, in the in the in the letter of Titus this morning. So if you want to turn there to Titus, we're gonna turn t- uh, Titus chapter two. Titus chapter 2, and if you're reading from your Fresh Bibles, I do have the page number today. It's 724. Uh, growing up, from, yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Growing up, I wish my pastor would have done that for me, so I, I want to help you guys out as, as best as I can. I want to be as good of a pastor as I can be, but um, we're going to be reading from Titus chapter 2. Um, 
Paul is writing this letter to um, this man named Titus, hence the name Titus. Um, you can probably guess the audience in, in who, who the author is writing to in the New Testament just by the name Titus, um, Timothy, uh, you know, Philippians. These are the who, who someone is writing to more than likely. Um, James was, was one from James. So that doesn't always apply. But uh, in, this, in, this, uh, in, this, um, in this book, in this letter, this is Paul, the Apostle Paul, writing to uh, Titus, one of his, one of his colleagues, uh, one of his, his, um, someone under his wing. And uh, he, he, he wants to talk to, um, to Titus about this, uh, this island. He's sending him on a missions trip, basically. Okay? And it's, it's this island called Crete. It's this island off, of the, off the coast of Greece. It's called Crete. And um, there is just a big mess that is happening in the land, in the island, on the island of Crete. So uh, the, the, Paul is sending Titus. He's like, hey, I, I want you to go out there, and I want, you to, uh, I want you to preach the gospel. I want you to help this church in Crete, this newly found church in Crete. Um, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you on your way. And so he sends him on his way, and he writes him a letter after that. And he's like, hey, just re- want to remind you of these instructions I've already sent you on, or this, this, this journey I've already sent you on. I want to remind you of, of what we're here to do today. And so this is a, uh, the, the island of Crete is a, is, a, is, a, is a different type of culture. It's a different type of culture. Um, this is a very pagan, I don't want to use the word infested, but I think that's proper for, <laughs> for what I'm trying to portray here. This is a very pagan infested culture uh, where these, these, these people, um, they, they worship these pagan gods, they worship these false gods, sacrifice to these false gods, and, and all that stuff that is all encompassing with, that comes with paganism and all that stuff. And so if you remember, does anybody remember the, the Greek god Zeus from like sixth grade history? Okay, I'm really taking you back here. Uh, they actually, Cretans actually believed that Zeus uh, was born and raised in Crete, um, became the god like he is, and actually gets buried there in Crete. So that's, that's kind of like, this is the, the culture on, in which they're living in, in the land of Crete. And so they are, they, they see these, these false gods, these pagan gods and, and Greek gods very highly, uh, and so much so that they uh, began to act like them. They, they began to, to live out that culture and, and to, 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 um, to, to be in that culture. And so, uh, now, Zeus was, you know, famous for lying and stealing and cheating and, and, and doing whatever it took to, to have women. Use, use your imagination there. Uh, and, and so this is what their culture was filled with, lying, cheating, stealing, uh, promiscuous activities, and every, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and, and so the, there's a church that's been planted there that's fairly new, and um, this, this, this pagan culture that's outside is actually starting to bleed into the church and Paul's like, whoa, we gotta, we gotta take control of this. We we can't have that in stuff in the church. We gotta, we gotta raise up new leaders. We gotta teach these people how to, how to, how to live out this this life with Jesus because it's all new. I mean, Jesus just died and resurrected and he he's you know ascended to heaven. I mean, just a few years ago, like not even a hundred years ago. So I mean, this is fairly new for a lot of people. It's a new way of living. And so um, Paul is sending Titus. He's like, hey, you gotta go and you gotta teach these people what to do. And here's what I'm gonna tell you. And so. Because, you know, Paul sees it this way, and he sees, yeah, these Cretans, um, actually, if, if, if someone were to call you a Cretan back in that day, it would, like, be a really, really big insult. Uh, so so that's, that's the kind of level the Cretans were on here. And you may have actually heard this insult from a time or two. But um, Paul's like, I know that these Cretans, we don't, they don't really get along with everybody, and they're really not that, I mean, good, per se, if you want to use that term. And, and <laughs> we don't really like them. However, Jesus died for them, too. So... With that being said, we have to go and we gotta we gotta show these people what the gospel really looks like. We have to show these people who Jesus really is, and so that's his his mission to uh, to Titus. We gotta to teach them a new way of living, show them a new way of living, um, and so chapter two uh, talks about Paul talks about how he should train the people while he's down there and what he should train them to do. So so let's dive in here to uh, the book of Titus here, uh, page number. I already gave it to you, 724, just in case you missed it. Titus chapter 2, we're just going to read eight verses today. Eight verses today, I, 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 I'm going to really try to keep it short today. I don't have a lot of material, but I think it's a good, it's, it's a good place. And so eight verses, surely I can't talk too much after that, all right? <laughs> you, would, you would think, okay, that's Philippians. That's not where I need to be. Okay, Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. This is Paul writing. He says, as for you, Titus, promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. In other words, live out the way that you 
you are teaching this faith. Let the way that you live prove that the way that you, or, I'm sorry, let the way that you live prove that what you believe really is true, really is good, and, and let it reflect what Jesus asks us to do, right? So this is what, this is Paul saying, promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching, the teaching that you, that you, or the, the material that you teach. Verse 2, teach the older men to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect, and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. They must not slander others or be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should teach others what is good. The, the older women should, must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and to be pure and to work in their homes and to do good, to be submissive to their husbands, then they will not bring shame on the word of God. In the same way, you, Titus, encourage the young men to live wisely, and you yourself must be an example to them by doing the good works of every kind. Let everything that you do reflect the integrity and the seriousness of your teaching. This is kind of just a, a repeat of what he said in the first verse. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and the seriousness of your teaching. Teach the truth so that your teaching can't be criticized, and those who oppose us will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. I, I want to talk to us today, briefly, briefly, I want to talk to us today about the idea of what it looks like to be a spiritual mother, to be a spiritual father, to be a spiritual leader, a parent, whatever Whatever um, terminology you feel most comfortable with, it, it's, it, the terminology doesn't really matter. It, it's, it's, it's all the same thing. But, but to be that, that motherly figure, that fatherly figure in someone's life, I want to I talk to us today what it means, or what it looks like to be that spiritual leader, something our parentless world really needs today. I believe, and, and, and if you, now, before you say, um, oh, this message is, is not for me, I'm too young for this, no, 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 please, please, understand, this, this message is for everybody, whether you're 50 or whether you're 15, I promise you, this message is for us, because there, more than likely, is someone that looks up to you in some way, shape, or form, and with that, with the, with the, with the relationship we have with Jesus, and this influence that we already have, we're able to make a huge impact right where we are, no matter how old you are. Okay, whether you're 50 or whether you're 15, this message is for you. Okay, so, so, so because I believe that, that being a spiritual parent is, 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 not necessarily, um, is, is, is not necessarily about the title, uh, but it, it doesn't have, it, and it has little to do with their age, but it has everything to do with their character. Again, like being a mom, it, it's, it's not just a title, it, it has everything to do with with your character. And so uh, I promise today this message is for all of us. And so I'm just going to gonna give us a simple title for this message today, mainly because I couldn't create one um, that, would, that sounded good. So this will work instead just as a default. But leading by example. And sometimes we don't need flashy titles or clickbait on YouTube, but I, I think this is, this is, the, the, um, this is the heart I, I want to I preach to us today is leading by example, living by example, leading by example. All right? Sound good? Okay, let's, let's pray this morning and, and jump right in. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you so much for, um, for, for just being, being the one who made a relationship with you possible, dying for our sins, becoming sin, nailing it to the cross so we could be called the righteousness of God. Thank you for taking away everything that separates us from each other and making it so possible just to have a relationship with you. I pray that you would lead us today, guide us today, let us hear what you want us to hear today and speak to, into our lives. Let us take something new from your word this morning that we didn't know before. And let's just draw closer to you each and every single moment that we have together. In Jesus' mighty name, the church said, amen, amen. I know where all my spiritual people are. I think we can all agree that moms are a different kind of breed, yes? Okay, mom, and if, you're, if your mom is here, you better agree with me. Okay, I, moms are a different kind of breed. Uh, mo moms, they're, 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 they're so tough and thick-skinned, you know what I'm saying? Any, any thick-skinned moms here, just like really tough, and you can just take whatever and just blow it right off. Uh, you know, um, we, we've, uh, we've got resilient moms and faithful moms. I think it's all credit creates the, 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 the mom title, and oh my gosh, are they just selfless. Selfless. Anybody's mom here selfless? Again, if your mom is here, your hand better be up. 
any selfless moms in the room? I, I, and, and if your mom is, is probably like my mom, um, she spent all this week preparing and, and getting ready and going grocery shopping and looking up recipes and stuff and, and ha- getting everything ready. That way she can have everybody over for dinner to celebrate her. And uh, she, would did, she would do all the cooking. She would clean the whole house, every, every inch of the house, even the upstairs that nobody's going to go into because she's just so paranoid that someone is going to find a speck of dust in your room and it's just going to be the end of the world, right? This, they're so selfless. They, they do everything for everybody else. And they make this huge dinner, for, especially for Mother's Day or, you know, lots of holidays, Easter and, and everything. Um, what's that? Yeah, Thanksgiving, yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, they, 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 they do all this work, and then they're usually the last ones to eat, right? <laughs> they just do everything for everybody else. And that's just, that's just what moms do. They're always the last ones to, to take care of themselves. They, they, they put everybody else first, especially their kids, especially their kids. Um, and I, Stephanie and I, we, uh, we, we have a four-month-old, and, uh, man, is he a hoot. So I've, I've, it's been so beautiful watching my wife really transition into uh, motherhood, and it's, it's just a beautiful thing to watch, and she's gorgeous. She was actually uh, poor, gosh, I feel so bad for her, because uh, I, I leave earlier, that way, you know, her and, and Judah can sleep uh, on Sunday mornings, and uh, she called me like, a, like an hour ago, and she's like, um, the car is dead. I was like, oh, because, you know, that's my job. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what to do. And so she's you know, the mighty mom, super mom, is just figuring everything out and putting the stuff and changing the car seat and doing all this stuff. And, and she's like, I don't know how to use a car seat. And she's like, I can walk you through that. But that's about it. And so she, she's, she's killing it. But she, um, she's just killing it at the mom game. She's doing great. And uh, it's just beautiful watching her transition into that, that motherhood, that momhood. And, um, you know, it's <laughs> she, she's so selfless. Um, I don't know if you've, if you have brought home a newborn before that likes to sleep during the day, but not at night. Okay, so you know my struggle then. Um, it's it's just like whenever we're up and talking, uh, he's just like, oh, your voices, they just calm me down, and he goes to sleep. But then whenever we try to go to sleep, he's like, hey mom, hey dad, let's let's play, you know, put my passy back in right now, <laughs> ah. And so my wife, she is, is wonderful. She's always the first to get up. Anytime Judah's like, eh, it just makes a little noise. She's like, get out of the bed, throw the covers off. What's wrong, son? Oh, my gosh. We got we to gotta help you. She's so selfless. And, uh, you know, not to brag because humble, you know, humility is a, a huge character trait of mine. So, but the other day I got up first, I know, and I put his passy in just because I value her and I love her and I want her to sleep. So, you know, being the, the great dad that I am, I let her sleep in the other day. It's very nice. I know. Very humble of me. I, thank you very much. Thank you. I know. No, it's, it's just, but, but moms, they, they sacrifice everything. They sacrifice sleep. <laughs> Hello. They sacrifice some, uh, eating sometimes. The other day, we, we were like, oh, my gosh, we forgot to eat all day long. <laughs> it's, it's someone else reminded us, have you eaten today? We're like, oh, actually, no, we haven't. Um, you sacrifice sometimes your sanity. You know, babies just crying and crying and crying. You, you sacrifice your sanity all for their, their children. Children, dads, you guys do a lot too. We'll celebrate, we'll celebrate you next month. Don't worry. Um, <clears throat> but but this, this concept of mothering, this concept of, of parenting really in general is, is, is really ultimately just, just putting others first. Putting, it's, it's servanthood is what it is. This concept of parenting, mothering is, is, is servanthood. And uh, I, I believe God has designed our hearts in a way that... Um, that we naturally do this without even thinking about it. You know, we don't have to sign a waiver like, I will make sure that I take care. I don't know. Do you? I, don't, I didn't, at least. Maybe Stephanie already did <laughs> and just took care, took care of that for me. But, um, you know, you, you, would, um, you just naturally take care of them. You would do anything for your child. You would do anything, not necessarily to make them happy, but to make sure they're safe and make sure they're well taken care of and making sure they're, they're living a, a good life, you know. And, and it doesn't matter what it takes. Uh, you'll just, you'll do it. That's, that's what parenting is. That's what, that's what it does to you. And we naturally have this. I believe God puts this naturally in our hearts uh, and it, it becomes manifest whenever we become parents, have kids, or really anybody under our supervision that we have to take care of. We just want to make sure that their needs are provided for over my own, just to make sure that they're good because I'm taking care of them. And uh, it just naturally develops. I love this. And um, <clears throat> I, I believe that God plants this in our hearts so he can give us a glimpse of his. 
I believe that, that, that God plants this, this, this concept of, of, of nurturing and mothering uh, and fathering and um, taking care of. And he plants that in our hearts so, so that we can get a glimpse of, of his heart. Of course, this, this naturally comes out when we, when become, when we become responsible for somebody. But, but he, he plants this in our hearts so he can show us just a glimpse of how much he loves us, how much he cares for us, how much he, he nurtures us. It nurtures us, because, I mean, gosh, if I feel this way about someone that I'm, I'm taking care of, how much more does God feel that way about me? And I, I remember, um, we, we do this all the time, uh, where we'll, <laughs> Judah will just fall asleep, and we'll just, just watch him. It's the most beautiful thing. Like, he's just sitting there, tongue hanging out and everything. It's not, I mean, it's not, <laughs> I mean, I think it's cute, but it's not like he's trying to be cute or anything, but we'll just, we'll just sit there and just stare at him like, ah, man. I love you so much. There's just something about it. And every single time, I remember from the day he was born to even to now, God always reminds me, and he plants this in my ear like, hey, this is how I feel about you. This is how much I love you. This is how much I love Judah. This is how much I love Stephanie. This is how much I love your, your mom, your dad, and her mom, her dad. This is how much I love your family. This is how much I love your friends. This is how much I love your church. This is how much I love the people you don't like. <laughs> That's how much I love them. I just, just stare at them because I'm so, just so blown away at, at, at how much I love them. This is, this is God's heart. He reminds me of this every single time that, 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 I, <laughs> that Judah just falls asleep and I look at him. And he, and he says to me, there was nothing that, I, that was going to stop me from being with you. In fact, he did everything it took to be with us. Jesus took, became everything that it took to be with us us, to make this relationship possible, because he really just does love us that much. And Jesus showed us his Father's heart by coming to this earth and becoming a servant for the, to serve the people that he loves. The Bible says he came not to be served, but to serve. He says this, this is his heart, this is his Father's heart to serve, to serve us, and just show us how much he really loves us. And to put, to put our needs above his own, to put, to put our need of a, of a savior, our need of a re- redemption, our need of a, of, a, of a loving father, our need of a, a relationship with God, he put that above his own life. And he willingly gave it up because that's how much he loves us. It's this nurturing heart that, that God has that he's planted in each and every single one of us, I believe, and I mean, come on, what, what kind of king washes feet? <laughs> what kind of God washes feet? Foot washing is, is, is a, is, is, it was the job for the lowly servants. It was a job for, I mean, the nobodies, the nothings. That, that's who washed the feet. You come in and it was just a nobody washing your feet. But Jesus became that person. He said, I want to wash all my disciples' feet. I want to wash your feet. I want to wash your feet. And uh, the, then as, as he was washing their feet, Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, I want you to do what I've done to you. I want you to wash your, other people's feet. I want you to take care of other people as I've taken care of you. Uh, since I've modeled servanthood to you, I need you to do the same for the rest of the people that I love as well. Or in other words, go and do as I have done to you. Go and do as I have done to you. And man, if we would just, if we would really embrace this, this way of, of living and, and loving and serving and, 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 and being with people as I am with you, and imagine how different our lives would look. Imagine how different other people's lives would look if we went and did to others as Jesus does to us, as, as his servants as as his as his um, as his disciples, as his apostles, what would our world look like if if we did to others as Jesus has done for us? 
Jesus also summed up uh, all of the commandments in the heart of the Old Testament laws in one statement. He says in, in Mark chapter 12 and in verse 30, he says, Love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength, but just as importantly, love others as you love yourself. Love others as you love yourself. And in the day that, or, uh, right before Jesus was about to ascend into heaven uh, and was going to send his Holy Spirit to the apostles and start the movement of the church, this was his, his really his command in, in Matthew 28 and 19. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In other words, go and make disciples, go and make learners, go and make students of the way of Jesus, because that's what I've done to you. Know how good it is to follow me and get others to follow me as well. Go and make disciples. Go and make followers of, of Jesus. This is our commission. This is our great commission. This is what we have been called to do. This is God's heart. This is God's heart. Not for us to keep everything bottled up inside. I don't know where we got this from. <laughs> where we just think, that oh, my relationship with God is my own. It's personal and no one can ever see it, ever. It's mine. We're so stingy with our relationship with God. Have you noticed this? It's like, oh, I'm not going to speak to them because I just don't like them. Or can you believe the things that they said to me? Like, I know I've been forgiven of all my sins, but if th I cannot forgive that. <laughs> that is, <laughs> are you serious? Or, you know, we, we, we are so stingy with this, with this faith, with this relationship with God, and we think that it's only ours. But, but G, two of the most memorable, memorable things that Jesus said is, is love others as you love yourself and also go and make disciples. It's a forward faith. We talked about this last week a little bit. I, I said it wasn't going to be connected, but it just connected in my head. It's a forward faith. <laughs> it's a forward faith. It's a, it's a, it's a how can I serve you faith? Because that, that was Jesus' attitude his whole life on earth. How can I serve you? What can I do for you? Because I love you that much. Because I love you so much. This is what we do as, as, as parents, as mothers and fathers, is what can I do to make this child, what can I do to make this, this person um, not necessarily happy, like I said before. It's not like we're trying to make everybody happy. I, I think if you are, are constantly trying to make everybody happy, then you're really not teaching them. I won't get into that. But if uh, I shouldn't go down that road. It's Mother's Day. Okay. Uh, taking care of, I'm constantly taking care of what can I do to make sure that you are safe, you are taken care of, and you are well. Right? This is our servanthood mindset that we have as parents as well. This is God's heart. This is God's heart for one another. It is, he's pretty clear about that. Serve one another. Go and do as I have done to you. And this is exactly why Paul sends Titus on his mission trip, basically, to, to, the, to the island of Crete. It's because if anybody needs to hear the gospel message, it's the Cretans. If anybody needs to hear the gospel message, it's them. Why? They are, everybody knew the Cretans back in the day. Everybody, they had a reputation. And they were the, they were the ones that just, they, they were liars and cheaters and stealers and, 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 and gluttons and promiscuous people. Um, and they just did whatever they want without any regards to anybody else or morality for that matter. This is the Cretans. And, and I didn't know this until this week, but the Cretans actually invented driving slow in the left lane. They did. It's true, 100%. That's how bad they are. Sinful people. <laughs> But you understand what I'm saying? The Cretans, they just have a bad reputation. They're just, they're, according to everybody else's eyes, they're not good people. They're not deserving of forgiveness. And Paul's like, neither are we. We got to go and we got we to gotta see them. Because Jesus loves them. And we love them as, as the church. We got to go show them the ways. And, and Paul is essentially saying, look, the only reason they, they are, are stuck in their wickedness is because that's all they know. This is the culture that they've they've grew up on. This is the this is the um, this is all that they they know. They worship these these pagan gods and these 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 false gods who, who lied, cheated, and stole their way to get whatever they wanted, and it worked out for them. So they they take this example because that's who's influencing them in this day and age. That that's all that they know. They're um, they're 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 being um, conformed to this this wicked culture that the Cretans have there because that's. That's, that's it. That's all they know. And so this, after the, the church comes in there, 
the, 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 the movement of the church, and, and Paul is, is, is one of the great apostles who's just sending people on their way to go and plant churches, to go and spread the gospel message. Um, there, the, the, there's a Cretan church that's been planted that even the, the culture around it has, has, I said this before, has, has bled into the church, and so now even the, the church leaders are being corrupt. The church leaders are, are, are being conformed. The, the, the entire church, it's, it's, and, and Paul's like, we have to go and we have to maintain the integrity of the church. We've got to go and we've got to retrain those leaders. We've got to go and we've got to, to, to show these people what it truly means to follow Jesus because it's, it's so good. And we can't miss out on this. We, and, uh, the, the, the church is, is substituting um, and sacrificing true life for, for just whatever they, whatever they want. And so um, this is why Paul specifically, when he, when he opened up the book in Titus chapter 1, uh, he says, we serve a God, we serve the God who does not lie. It's because this is what the Cretans were familiar with. They lying and, and, and cheating and stealing their way to get whatever they want. So Paul is saying, no, no, no. We have to show them the real, true, authentic God who does not lie. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. The beginning and, and the end. Um, and, and, and so... so this is what we have to show the, the Cretans who our God is, the God who does not lie. He, he, he is who he says he is, and he does what he says he does. We have to go and show them this, this true God, that he is trustworthy, he is faithful, he is true, he is good, and you can put your faith in him. He's saying, Titus, you got to show these people. you got to show them. This, this is your commission, bro. This is what you got to do. This is your job. Let's go and change this church of Crete, because if anybody can do it, God can do it. And so they were, they were responsive and they're, and they're faithful. And Paul, he's just so moved. And he's like, you've got to teach the, the women and the men to, to train the, the younger women and men. Because you've got, you've, he's grieved to hear that young men and women are being influenced by this culture and conforming to this culture and, and thinking that the key to life is attained by cheating, lying, stealing, and sleeping our way there. It's not much different than the way we live today. Even the church was tolerating and accepting and endorsing this kind of lifestyle as a cheap substitute for true, real, authentic life that Jesus gives us. Again, not much different than the world we live in today. So if this message is, any, is, is, is applicable for at any time, I think it, we need to hear it today, right here and now. And so I love what, I love what Paul instructs Titus to go and do. He doesn't go and he doesn't tell Titus to go and stand at the corner of Main Street with a cardboard sign that says, All Cretans are going to hell. You're too, you're too lost. You know, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say, he doesn't send him with a condemning message that says, You guys have sinned too much. You're way too far gone. You, there's, there's no saving you guys. You, you better just prepare. He doesn't send him and he doesn't say that. Paul doesn't tell him to go make a YouTube video to tell him how, how bad everybody is. And how wicked the church is and slandering other leaders. He doesn't say that. Paul doesn't tell him to do any of that. He's, instead, he says, I need you to train the older men and train the older women to live a virtuous life, a way that honors God. And let them show the younger ones what it truly means to be alive in Jesus. Let them be the example. Let them be the influence. More than they need anything right now, they just need someone to show them the truth. They just need someone to look up to. They just need someone to show them, not tell them, but, but show them who Jesus really is. All of the influences in their lives are corrupt and just not good. But I just need you to not be that. I need you to be the one who shows them what it's like to live a life with Jesus. Train them, show them how, how it is. Let them see Jesus in the way that you live. Let them see Jesus in the way that you love them. Take them under your wing. Love them. Value them as if they were your own kids, as if they were your own sons and daughters, teenagers. This is what Paul is telling Titus to do. Be the spiritual mother. Be the spiritual father that they desperately need right now. And I want us to understand 
Paul's heart here too is, you know, because these are Cretans. These are the most like ungodly people of, of, of all time. You know, they're like Sodom and Gomorrah and, 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 and Nineveh. And the way that I grew up, the way that we would help these kinds of, of these kinds of people, I say, is, you know, we're all on a different journey, but, but we, we've, we've all got Cretans in our head, I think, and I, that should be convicting for us. We've all got someone where we think, ah, they're just too far gone. And this is, this is Paul's heart, but the way I grew up, you know, you would just tell them, oh, you would give them a Bible verse to read. Give them, you know those, those tracts they used to hand out? <laughs> it's like a million dollars on it, and on the back it's got John 3.16 or something like that. You laid it in the parking lot, hopefully someone finds it. You know, this is how I, you, you would go and you would tell them, hey, you need to go to church. Hey, I'm, I'm praying for you. You know, that's what, that's what you would say. And Paul's like, no, don't, don't just tell them that kind of stuff. This is what I need you to be. I need you to be their spiritual parents. I need you to be their, their mother, their father, and whoever they need to be, the, their leader. I just need you to get down in the dirt with them, not condemn them, not tell them how wrong they are. Just be with them. Be Jesus. Because this is what he does. When we... When we when we throw accusations and condemnations around and blanket statements without getting to know someone's heart, it causes a barrier to where they just, and they don't even listen anymore. And I think this is the problem with the church today is that we think, oh, I've got to post this on Facebook so that it'll get people to change their mind. Let me just give you some advice. No one's going to change their mind on Facebook, all right? No matter how many comments you, you put out there, it's just going to be a big, giant mess. And then the people that aren't Christians are going to be like, this is why I don't want to follow this Jesus guy. We need to, this is Paul's heart. We need to get down in the dirt with people and understand who they are. Know that they are loved by Jesus and, and get to know them and love them yourself as if they were your own. Because this is what they really need. And I think in, in, in the world today, this is what we really need. In our, in our community, in our culture that we live in today, this is, this is what we need. We need some, some spiritual parents. I know if that term doesn't really sit right with you, just use spiritual leader. It's okay. We need some spiritual mothers and fathers and leaders to, to really rise up and take on this challenge, not to, not to just preach at people, but to be with people. We need, ooh, we need less condemnation and more conversation face-to-face -face conversation. Because these are real people that, that Jesus really loves. And I think it's up to us, it's up to the church to, to go out and, and, and we don't need more pastors. We don't need more, more Bible verses thrown at them. We don't need more worship songs shared on their page. We just need to get to know them and love them just as Jesus does. Guide them lead them because there's an entire generation, there's an entire community of people outside these four walls that desperately need the love of a mother the love of a father someone that can show them the ways of Jesus and not just tell them about him someone that can live this out and do it with them because this is where the change really happens. Paul's on, to some, Paul's on to something here. He knows that personal connection is what really makes the difference. Personal connection. And subsequently, it's the most awkward thing that we struggle with nowadays. <laughs> we don't like talking to people face to face, mask to mask, whatever you want to say now. I don't know. It's awkward. But that's why we really have to press into it. Because this is, this is how Jesus can move in someone's life. If we are, are willing and, and, and able and, and, and accepting of, of the call in our lives to go and, 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 and really be with people, to be with people, to be the spiritual mothers and spiritual fathers to people and lead them in a way and loving them like they're our, our own. And age has nothing to do with this. But I think we all have this nurturing heart that God gives us, this loving heart that God gives us that we 
need to be intentional about using with the people we're surrounded with. So this is my, this is my challenge for us today, is to take notice of, of who in your life maybe you've got a little bit of influence over. And, and not to try to change them. I, I think that's a, bad, that's a bad end goal because we're really bad at the Holy Spirit's job. So it's not that we're trying to change them, but, but we can see that they're lost and broken and, and hurting and in need of a Savior. Well, surely we can introduce them to Jesus, maybe not by telling them about it. Of course, that helps, but, but by living it out. Let the Holy Spirit do the rest of the work. Man, that would be such a relief for our, a lot of us. <laughs> let the Holy Spirit do the rest of the work. Our job is to introduce people to Jesus and, and let them know how much he really loves them. Let them know that he adores them. That, that, that they, they are God's masterpiece. And they're so loved. So my, my, my challenge for you today is to take 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 uh, inventory, take notice uh, of, of who we have influence, who looks up to us in some way, shape, or form. Maybe it's at work, maybe it's in your family, maybe it's uh, maybe it's your friend groups. I, I don't know. There's there's someone that probably comes to mind when I say they look up to you. And I and I want us to I want us to be intentional about living our lives to model Jesus, to model servanthood, to model model this nurturing heart. And make a difference in their lives. This is what I, I want us to do this week. And and as you know, as we as we celebrate Mother's Day, and we we we're about to leave here and go eat way too much food somewhere. Um, let's let's let Mother's Day remind us of the influence and the impact that we can have when we put when we are that spiritual mother, that spiritual father in someone's life. We don't have to go after the whole world. I don't think I'll ever meet eight billion people. But God has, has placed you where you are for such a time as this, around the people that you're around for such a time as this, for you to be obedient to God's calling in your life, to live out what it looks like to follow Jesus. And no, maybe we can't make a difference in eight billion people, but maybe you can make a difference in just one. And that right there gets heaven celebrating and cheering and they throw a party for just one person that repents and turns to Jesus. This is my heart today and I hope it's yours too. But I, I want us to, uh, let, let's stand up really quick and I, I told you I was going to be sort of on time today. I'm getting there. I'm, I'm bringing it down a little bit. But this is my heart today and I hope it's yours too. That there's a there's a lot of people out there that really need the love of Jesus in a real tangible way and they don't need it told to them. They just need it modeled modeled in their life. And I think a lot of us too, uh, it's it's very important for us uh, as 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 Jesus followers to have someone in that role in our lives too, someone to be our spiritual mother, our spiritual father. And maybe you're, you're, you're very fortunate and, and you're able to have that in your biological mother or father, and that's awesome. I love that. But I think it's so important that we have someone that influences us and leads us towards Jesus as well. So my extra challenge, sure, is for you to find that person too. And you don't have to be worried about it. Like, will you be my spiritual mother? That's, you don't have to. <laughs> but let them, let them influence you in a way that really makes a difference and it helps you grow closer to Jesus as well. So let's let that be our, let's let that be our drive this Mother's Day is, is to be that to someone else in hopes that they might see Jesus maybe for the first time and let it completely wreck their lives forever. Let me pray over you guys. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you so much for this opportunity to just be here and be in your presence. God, we're so grateful that you're everything that we needed. In every season that we've needed you, you've come through. You've been there. 
you've never left and you never will. You've never left us. You've never forsaken us. And it's not surely going to start today. We're so grateful and we're so thankful for your faithfulness in all seasons of life. And thank you for bringing us to the place where we are right now. Thank you for bringing us to the place where we are right now. In whatever season we're in, just together in your presence and, and experiencing your love and your goodness and your grace. God, I pray you give us the boldness and the strength and courage to go out and into this world and, and really just be you to people. Live, live our lives in such a way that makes such a difference, such an impact in, in the people that you've placed around us. Let us, let us love them. Let us, let us serve them. Let us just be who you are to them in hopes that they might see Jesus in our eyes, hopes they might see you in our eyes, Father. Give us the strength and the boldness to go out and, 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 and do this. And I always give this invitation if, if you're here today, maybe, maybe your mom drug you here today, and that's awesome. She's doing a good thing for you. But there, there is a God who really loves you. I mean, just truly, really, really loves you. He knows what you've done. He knows where you've been. He knows where you're planning on going and what you're planning on doing, and he, and, he, and he still loves you. For, for who you are, not what you've done, for who you are. And, and I don't, I don't want to miss an opportunity for you to walk out of here and, and not be able to start a relationship with, with Jesus today. But I just want to let you know that he loves you so, so much, and he cares for you so, so much, and he is orchestrating everything together for good for you to hear this message that he loves you so, so much. And you don't have to pray a weird prayer or, or say a, a weird phrase or perform any ritual but you just gotta you just gotta walk towards him choose that today is the day that I'm going to start following Jesus take that next step towards Jesus whatever that looks like I want to encourage you not to leave this place without doing that if, if, if that's you today because I promise you he's going to change your life forever and it's going to be so good from here on out God, I just pray for, for all of us here in this room that you would keep us safe in this world that we live in. Let us be influencers. Let us, uh, let us be servants. Let us be nurturers and, and really just lovers of all the people you died for. And God, we love you so much. We're so grateful for everything you've done, everything you will do, and all the things you've done for us and, and given us for us to be right here where we are. I pray you keep us safe. You give us strength and boldness. And let us just be the salt and light into the world. Ultimately, that will change the world because you're in it. And we love you and we praise you and we give you all of who we are today. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, all the church said, amen. And amen and amen. Guys, I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day. Um, all, the, all the ladies here, we have a gift for you on the way out uh, because whether you're a biological mother or not, you have the, the, um, the authority to be a spiritual mother in someone's life today. So we want to honor you today. So make sure you, you grab that on the way out. Uh, but guys, I love you so much. Go out and live life with the one who gives life.